So a little bit of a backstory. Whenever I get bored, I go through really old cookbooks. Usually cookbooks that are over 100 years old. And you can find those online at places like Google Books. You can download them in PDF form. And so what I'm looking for, I kind of do this if I get bored or if like nothing sounds good. Like I'm kind of getting burnt out on what I'm eating. So I just go over these really old recipe books. I try to find something that's as basic as it can get. And in this 1871 cookbook, I found this recipe that was only a three ingredient cookie. And I'm like, I'm going to try that. So in my mind from just the ingredients, which is only butter, brown sugar, and flour, I kind of had like an idea. I kind of thought it was going to taste plain and maybe be kind of hard because most older cookies were really hard cookies. But when I made it, oh my gosh, let me just say it was quite the surprise. And I've had this joke going now for like two days on my personal Facebook page about these cookies. And I'll put up some screenshots about that. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make this. I'm going to give you two different ways to make it because um, the recipe is basically... 125 grams of salted butter but you can also use regular butter and just add salt to it it calls for 100 grams of brown sugar but you could also use 100 grams of granulated sugar and add two tablespoons of uh, molasses and it also calls for 150 grams of self-rising flour but you can use all-purpose flour Add some baking powder and salt to that if you don't have self-rising flour. So let's go ahead and get into this. It's really simple to do. Everything's done by weight, which I kind of want to bring up an important observation about that. It was an 1871 American cookbook, and the recipe was in grams. So that tells me this recipe more than likely originated outside of the United States because generally we measure everything in cups and tablespoons and teaspoons. But I had someone ask me why I didn't post the recipe in cups like I normally do, and it's because not everything converts over to cups very well. For instance, 125 grams of butter is about one half cup. 100 grams of dark brown sugar is about one half cup of sugar. 150 grams of self-rising flour comes out to one and one-fifth cups. So if you really want the recipe to be exact, you need to do it by weight. You can get kitchen scales on Amazon. I'll leave links to them down in the description. You can get them as cheap as six or seven dollars. The average price is between nine and ten dollars, and some of them are more expensive. The butter needs to be softened. I've got the bowl that I'm going to use to mix with on my scale, so that way I center the scale to the bowl so it shows zero. Now I'm using regular butter, which means right off the bat, um, the way you make salted butter from regular butter, you put one quarter teaspoon of salt for every cup of butter. That means I actually need an eighth of a teaspoon of salt for my half cup of butter. So I'm going to do the salt first. You may not be able to see me always measure this stuff out or pour it or whatever, but we're going to do the salt first. If I go over a little bit, it's not going to matter. We have to do that because the weight is also included in the butter. Now I'm going to go ahead and do my 125 grams of butter. Perfect. 
Now, we want to soften this butter. I'm just going to stick it in a microwave for a minute. Well, actually for more like 10 or 15 seconds. Next thing we're going to do is add our dark brown sugar. That is 100 grams. And there's our 100 grams. Next thing we're going to need is 150 grams of self-rising flour. I don't have self-rising flour, but I do have baking powder. So I want to add one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. And I'm just using a half teaspoon. So I need to do three of them. That was just the one I grabbed, so... There's one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. We're going to do a quarter teaspoon of salt, which means I need an eighth of a teaspoon twice. So now I need, instead of 150, I just need 143. One forty three. Now that we have everything in the bowl that we need, we're going to go ahead and measure or mix this up. This will be a somewhat wet dough. It won't be like a cookie dough, like what you normally think, and that is normal. So now that you've got this done, you need to stick the bowl in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes. Might be better off to leave it in there for 60 minutes. What that does is that causes the dough to set up some to make it easier to drop onto your cookie sheet. So I'll go ahead and put this in the refrigerator. I'll bring you back at the next step. When you're nearing the time that your dough is in the refrigerator, the time being up, you want to go ahead and preheat your oven. Now it's kind of a weird temperature again because it's in grams but it's 305 degrees fahrenheit there's going to be something weird about the cookie sheet and that is you're only going to drop the dough on in one half teaspoon size which is about half of a small cookie scoop the first time i made these i used a small cookie scoop size and the cookies ended up being like three and a half or four inches in diameter so the original recipe said a half a teaspoon i was like who's going to make cookies that small so i made them bigger and now i kind of understand why it's that way so a half a teaspoon is the only size that i would recommend it's going to probably make about a two to two and a half inch cookie All right, so once you take it out of the refrigerator, the easiest way that I found to do this the first time is using a cookie scoop and then like a rubber spatula or something to get it out because you're not going to fill the cookie scoop all the way up. So once it comes out of the refrigerator, your dough is going to be uh, more stiff and not as sticky as it used to be. But you only want to do like half of a cookie scoop or half of a teaspoon. You want to use like a parchment paper lined cookie sheet or however you do your cookies normally you're basically going to drop these on to the sheet this recipe should make about 25 cookies so if you go to put these on your cookie sheet and you've only got you know you only have 12, then you know you made them too big. I don't know if four in a row is going to work. That's what I'm going to try to do. The other thing is, too, is that my parchment paper was at the end of the roll. You got to remember this is self rising flour. That is 
is way too much in this one. So you're going to put them in the oven at 305 degrees for 20 minutes. Might take 21, might take 22, might only take 18 for your oven. All ovens are different. So um, basically when you pull them out, they're not going to look like they're done yet. The top of them are just going to start to crystallize a little bit. And the inside is going to be moist and soft. So you just kind of need to keep an eye on them. Uh, the original recipe called for 20 minutes, and I'm thinking in my oven's probably more like 21 minutes. Always a great sound to hear. So the first time that I made these, I let them cool completely on the baking sheet. Once the cookies in the baking sheet is cold, then you can take and remove them like you normally would, store them in a Ziploc bag, eat them all in less than 20 minutes like I did. Uh... Wonder how you ate 20 all these cookies in less than 20 minutes. Then contemplate making a second batch or maybe a third or a fourth batch. Um, yeah, these are very addictive. I have to be honest with you. The first time I made them, I made them with light brown sugar. And this time I made them with dark brown sugar. And I'm going to compare the taste when I go to sample these. I didn't record the first batch. They were absolutely delicious. And uh, the one thing I noticed is they tasted very similar to butterscotch. So that's why I went with the dark brown sugar because butterscotch is made with dark brown sugar. And uh, if these taste like butterscotch cookies, man, this is going to be the best cookie ever. And currently my all-time favorite. And I found it just because I was bored and nothing sounded good. And I'm flipping through an old cookbook from 1871. And I said, these cookies, this cookie recipe is so simple. I'm going to try it because I'm not going to be out anything other than a little bit of time. And then I was amazed at how well they taste. If I was to rate these in like within my top 10 cookies, this is going to be right up in one of the top first three. So this dark brown sugar will determine where it places at in my top three cookies of all time. And this is only the second time I've had them, so that's kind of unusual. Right now, the status kind of goes with no-bake chocolate cookies, then snickerdoodles, and then these, the first set that I made with light brown sugar. So um, it might get bumped up a little higher on the list after I do the uh, dark brown sugar ones. We'll wait and see. So I kind of cheated and I already had one. Here we go. Mm. They're still kind of crunchy on the outside and still soft and moist on the inside. Hmm. Whether or not, compared to like the light brown or the dark brown sugar, I actually kind of think I like the light brown sugar better than the dark brown. Hmm. I, I'm going to have to eat all of these before I decide. That's just all there is to it. Mmm, man. These are really so good. Give them a try. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Thanks for watching. As always, God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads.